Today we're looking at isolation switches and switch fuses from Luden Palazzoli. Fantastic day. I've got the best position here. I can just lean against this switch here because Gary is going to be answering all the technical parts of this video. Hence the glasses are on from the start and we're going to be looking at on-load isolators. What do you think we mean by on-load isolators, Gordon? Uh, well, I'm assuming that's a switch or isolator where you can actually disconnect the load with it fully powered up. Okay, without reading that in the instructions, how do you think you're going to be made aware of that on devices that have already been installed? Oh, I don't know. You tell me, Gary. What am I looking for? All right, okay. I've got the instructions in front of me here. So if I just pop it up here, we can see it on the screen now. So let's look at the symbols there underneath two pole, three pole, and four pole switch. That's the symbol for an on load isolator. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And we'll explore it a little bit further in BS7671 in a minute. Okay, Can you find well, it on any of these? Well, obviously we're not going to, these instructions, okay, might be, if we ever look at them in the first place, we won't be looking at them when they've been lost after the project's been installed. So where can I see that on here? Right. Ah, so I'm picking this one up here, Gary. There's the, there's the front. Ah, so there's the symbol there. That's yes. That's the one. So it's the, it's the switch with a sort of big a dot and a line across it. Absolutely is. So yeah, that's the on-load isolator symbol. Do you want to try one more for okay, me? Okay, I'll pull it out of this one here. So, ah, right, so here's our, this plastic-based isolator. It's on the label there. Yes, it is. Yeah, and you'll often see that symbol as well on consumer units as well for the main switch on a consumer unit. It's really small, but you're right. Yes, you will. So what does that mean? So let's explore what functions these switches have from BS7671. So if we look here at this table here, which is table 537.4, it's over two pages, I've got a segment of it here, and if you look down at isolating switch, you can see the BSEM number, and that BSEM number is 60947-3. The important three columns for me, Gordon, are the following. Isolation, yes. Emergency switching, yes. Functional switching, yes. So what do you think we mean by functional switching? Uh, function, you can switch it on and off in its normal operation, like a light switch. Absolutely, emergency switching. Uh, emergency switch, I need to switch it off quickly because somebody's been dragged into the machine and I need to stop that happening. And absolutely, and isolation? Isolation, I'm going to be working on the machine, possibly doing some mechanical maintenance or electrical maintenance. Absolutely, so these switches in front of us offer all three of those functions and we know that, so if I look back into my instructions here, I pick up the number once again. So we go back into here, you can see I've got that number 60947-3. So we know it for, performs all three of those operations, Gordon. What else do you want to know about this? Uh, well, let's have a think. Isolators, why are they always red and yellow? Or they tend to always be red and yellow. They look nice, okay. <laughs> that would be too easy, wouldn't it? So of course, because these can be used for emergency isolation, the regulations say the preferred colours are, what do you reckon the preferred colours are, Gordon? Uh, let's have a guess here. Yeah, I'm thinking possibly red for the switch, but then yellow surrounding it. Let's have a look. So if we go into BS7671 and look in the section here for devices for emergency switching, okay, and we look down at the regulation 537.3.3.5, the preferred colours are red with a contrasting background of yellow. So that's why we see it so many times out there in industry, these colours, because it can also be used as those three functions. One of them was for emergency switching, Gordon. Okay, so the meet, I can see it across a room and I know where I'm running to as you're being dragged into the machine. <laughs> Probably the opposite direction, <laughs> yeah, from the switch. Yes, yeah, we, we get that one. So, so that's a start look at what we've got here. So these are not just a switch. Mm -hmm. They're obviously an emergency switch, a functional switch, and also can perform isolation. Okay, so I guess next we need to have a look at the things the electrician really cares about and actually what's the product like to install and some of those other important features. So as the electrical contractor, Gordon, what are you looking for in this range of isolators from Luden Palazzoli? Okay, so the first thing I'm thinking about is the current rating. Do they have the span of current ratings that I'm going to encounter in the installation? So lots of people have sort of low, rate, low amperage ratings. It's when you get to those higher amperage ratings and some ranges start to struggle. But thankfully, this range from Luden goes all the way up to 125 amp in the range we've got on the table here even bigger when you look at the, the, some of the bigger units we've got behind us. So yeah, that's covered. 
Nothing worse is that you start an installation maybe with a smaller load and you pick a manufacturer of isolator and by the time you get to the end they don't actually make the range and that would bother my OCD in order that I could complete it using one range and one range only and Luden Palo's only got all that covered. What else are you looking for? Uh, so I think obviously we think about current ratings but it's not just about current ratings. We're thinking about what type of load makes up that current rating. Okay, so pick this one up then. Can you tell me on the side of it what type of loads that's looking to deal with? Okay, so on the side you have got AC21, AC22, AC23, and then we'll start seeing kilowatt ratings over there. So what does that mean, Gary? Okay, so let's have a look at the table then and look at those. So you said AC21, 22 and 23. So we're looking at resistive loads, including moderate overloads for 21. We're looking at switching of mixed resistive and inductive loads, including moderate overloads for 22. And AC23, is the switching of motor loads or highly inductive loads. Okay, so again, when we're thinking about AC23, that's where a lot of products drop out of the drop out of the market because that's the obviously that's the difficult one where you've got those inductive motors and transformers. So what else is on your wish list then? Okay, so next thing I'm thinking about is cable room. Have I got enough room inside there to terminate the conductors easily? I'm saying some products on the market might struggle in that area, not enough room in there. So let's have a look inside this, Gary. Let's sort of bring that camera in. Oh, uh, we like a mechanism. That's that a nice, nice mechanism there. So again, if I remove the instructions because we never read them. Um, yeah, so you can see there's lots of room in there to bring cables up and around, terminate them in. Uh, what I also like as well is these are cage type terminals. Okay. So that's going to be uh, that's kinder to the conductors as you bring them in. But obviously we're thinking on switches. Sometimes we're thinking just the pure current carrying capacity. Yeah, and, and that can be an issue, isn't it? Because you could say, oh, I need 80 amps. However, you could size a cable at 80 amps, but there's some other considerations. It could mean the cable is a lot bigger, Gordon, isn't that? Yeah, so I mean, if there's thermal constraints or volt drop and you've had to oversize the conductors, you end up back here and you need to terminate them into a terminal that might be a little bit smaller, so you're going to have to bring in some copper lug terminals there as well. So they're going to need extra space. And thankfully, loads of space in there. So have a look inside the switch fuse version here, Gary, the metal okay. version here. So again, if I, oh, a nice Lovely. mechanism. Like a mechanism. Again, we can see bags of space in there. There is, yes. There's a little symbol there that you always like to, okay. to find for that. Yep. And isolation. what does that symbol mean? Just to have a little uh, plenary on you? Yeah, on, on, load, uh, on load switching and isolation. Okay, yeah, so loads of room in there. Yeah, so I like that, that's good. So let's go back to that mechanism. We said it was one action in order to isolate it, okay? Do you know why that is? I don't know, you're, not, you're going to tell me there's some obscure regulation, Gary, and that's why they have to be like that. So let's have a look at that then. We're looking in 465, and then that regulation for emergency switching off. We've got the following. The arrangement for emergency switching off shall be such that one single action will only interrupt the appropriate supply. Okay, so basically a quarter turn in this yes. case. Yes, so, so one action in order for emergency to interrupt the supply. So we haven't got to do several different things in order to turn off the supply. So all of these here have that mechanism within them. Okay, that's good. Then the next thing I'm thinking about is the range of materials. So sometimes I might want to use a metal-based isolator, I might want to use a plastic isolator. Okay. And Luden even have GRP isolators as well. Okay, just for those people out there, tell them what GRP stands for. Well, glass reinforced plastic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sometimes called fiberglass, but it's not fiberglass, it's perhaps the repairing the car wing fiberglass, but yeah. Okay. I'm showing your age there, Gary. Cars don't rust these days. But, um, yeah, so that, yeah, a huge range of yeah, bags of room, lots of different types of materials to cope with lots of different environments in which you might be installing it in. Doesn't stop there. High IK ratings on these products as well. Um, so again, it's a pretty robust if they're going to get knocked around, you know, depending on what type of installation you're working in. And while you're there, you might want to be considering the IP rating of some of these enclosures. Do you want to have a look at some of these and give us those IP okay, ratings, Gordon? So again, we're back on the back on the label. So we'll see. We've got uh, so minimum rating across this range is IP65. Okay. So that's yeah, that's you can use them in most outdoor environments. So we said these isolators could be used for isolation, in other words, allowing somebody to work on the machinery. And the one in front of us here, Gordon, I've already introduced three locking areas, of which one of them also gives us the ability to have another six locks in there. So in order that we can work on that machine nice and safely. Yeah, oh, right, that's good. I thought it was that. It's like that bridge in Paris where people chain all the locks to it. I thought you were trying to recreate that on the bench. There's that many locks on it. But let's have a look at this one in a closer form and see where we can see when it's on and when it's off and the locking points on this isolate here. So I'll bring in the camera, Gordon. You want to show me this one? 
So if you yeah. rotate that in the position, what is it in at the moment? So that's on. Okay, it's on in that position. And then tilt it there. You can see we've got two lock off points on this variant. Uh, and also interesting to note as well, you can't remove the switch. So some of these isolators, you'll find a screw in the middle here and people can remove the handle of the isolator. Even though it's in the off position? Uh, yes, even in the off position, yeah. So that, I have seen it. Um, and then also to remember as well, these are interlocked as well. So I can't, uh, in, the, in the on position, even though I've removed the screws, I can't get the cover off. Do you want to prove that again on that one? That's an easy yeah, one. So this yeah, again, so yeah, this yeah, has again. a separate lock-in device there, but even on that case, I can't, got to be in the off position. All right, I've got one behind me here. I'm going to need a hand just to pop this on the bench. And I want you, okay, it's currently in the uh, on position. Can't open the door, so that, that rings true with what you've just said. Just, uh, just pull the mechanism for me, so in case I wanted to open the door, Gordon, because remember, you're contractor this time. That was a hefty mechanism, isn't it? Well, like an ice mechanism. This is the 315 amp switch fuse from Luden. And the good thing about Luden, if there's something in the range they don't have, they're quite willing to customize it to fit the exact needs of your project. So as always, me and the team from Luden Palazzoli are interested in your comments. Please leave them below. Are you currently fitting any of the range of isolators from Luden Palazzoli? Are you thinking about fitting them in the future? Is there something that you think is missing from their range and they would benefit from having it? Please leave those comments below and we will get back to as many as we can.